द मेकिंग ऑफ एग्जाइल सिंधी हिंदूज एंड द पार्टीशन ऑफ इंडिया बाय नंदीता वी हैव सीन अ नंबर ऑफ बुक्स ऑन द मैसिव क्रॉस माइग्रेशन ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ऑन कम्युनल लाइन्स एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ राइट्स इन पंजाब एंड बंगाल इन द वेक ऑफ पार्टीशन बट नॉट मैनी एट लीस्ट इन इंग्लिश हैव अपेयर ऑन द माइग्रेशन ऑफ हिंदूज फ्रॉम सिंध द पॉइंट हैज बीन वेलिडली रेज बाई स्कॉलर नंदीत इन हर वेल रिसर्च बुक द मेकिंग ऑफ एग्जाइल सिंधी हिंदूज एंड पार्टीशन ऑफ इंडिया Nandita was born into a family which migrated from Sin soon after partition and yet she does not let the stories she heard cloud her objectivity remaining impartial to the core she writes about how Sin was the land of sufis and saints and thus did not breed hatred and that sindhi hindus suffered much less than the hindus or for that matter muslims and sikhs in punjab and bengal unlike in the two punjabs there are areas in sin where hindus and muslims live together amicably nowhere is this more noticeable than in thar park where they swim and sing together a case in point is the current drought where the members of the two communities continue to suffer at the hands of nature and government apathy Nandita recalls that riots did not take place in Karachi in 1947 but erupted later when Muslims from across the newly carved border landed in large numbers in the city they were empty handed and in many cases they had left some of their close relatives behind she compares the situation to the riots in Delhi where the Hindus and Sikhs in no better condition than the Muslims who fled to west punjab sought refuge in over crowded camps she added that the violence in karachi was less intense and less prolonged than the riots in delhi nandita also feels that sex crimes against women in sin at the time of partition were much less than in the two punjabs Many personal narratives of Sindhi Hindus who lived through partition don't mention abjection and rapes she states Nandita many conclusions are based on narratives not just from Hindus but also from some Muslims in addition she digs into the newspaper of the times quotes from Sufi poetry and myths and interviews people directly or indirectly affected by partition One such instance is of her quoting a Muslim who said in January 1948 Sindhi Muslims are peace loving people they are hospitable and work with patience and deep thinking the result has been that Sindhi Muslims have been accused as dishonorable pro hindu and anti islamic she also points out that in Gujarat and Rajasthan the refugees from the neighboring province were at times labeled the meat eating Sindhi Hindus who are Muslims at heart the first part of the book explores the position of Hindus in Sindh while the second part deals with their resettlement in India there are graphic details of the conditions in refugee camps as described by author and their children much of the burnt of the burden was borne by bombay According to an estimate out of 290,000 Sindhi Hindus who migrated between August 1947 and mid January 1948 as many as 240,000 went to Bombay province this was because not too long ago Sindh was part of the Bombay presidency and even at the time of partition the colleges in Sindh were affiliated to the University of Bombay while one has read much about the trains that brought refugees from india to pakistan and vice versa not much has been written about the plight of the displaced persons who sail from karachi to bombay and from bombay to karachi tickets for steamers were difficult to get even if one was prepared to pay an extra amount illegally of course the steam ships carried four times the number of passengers they were designed to transport 
One major advantage that the ships offered over trains was that of security. While trains were attacked with alarming frequency, vessels sailed without any such threat. Nandita raises another point which is not generally kept in mind when she says, since sin had not been partitioned and had in its entirely become a part of Pakistan, there was no part of India which the Sindhi Hindus could claim as their own. Wherever they went, they were refugees and ethnically speaking outsiders. In other words, they were denied the privilege of a linguistic territory. Those associated with the prestigious DJ college in Karachi would be interested to learn that at the time of partition, some Hindu members of the teaching faculty who migrated to Bombay set up a college in Bombay which soon won recognition for its excellence. It was called Jai Hind College but was nicknamed Jai Sind College. Many non Sindhis got admission in the institution and at the end of the first five years of the institutions, existence Sindhis formed half the number of students. Some of the part which I read was written by Asif Nurani in December 21, 2014 in Dong. Nandita is a chartered accountant, lawyer and investment banker who did her MA in anthropology. After completing her MA, she started studying the Sindhi community in India as part of her research project, Reconstructing Lives, which explored memories of mass violence at the time of partition. In April 2001, she first visited Sindh and traveled to Karachi, Hyderabad, Lalkana and Sakkar. This trip turned out to be a landmark for her life. Sindh and Sindhi culture suffered greatly due to this migration. In Sin, before partition, Hindus and Sikh were a clear minority of less than 30% of the population. Consequently, the Sindhis who suffered from partition violence were overwhelmingly Hindus and Sikh. Imagine packing a small bag and leaving your country overnight, your home and homeland, assets and property friends, memories, and a way of life, not knowing what lies at the end of the journey. Imagine arriving in a city of strangers with nowhere to live and no source of income and not knowing how or where to start a life. This is what thousands of Sindhi Hindus experience. However, it is important to bear in mind that many Muslims whether Sindhis or Mahajir gave Sindhi Hindus help and sympathy in times of trouble. On occasion, the Hindus in India looked down upon Sindhi Hindus, making them feel unwelcome, that sometimes Sindhi Hindus could turn against their kin or even Indian Muslims in the difficult process of resettlement. Here is the map of Sindh in 1947. About a million must have been murdered or injured. Property worth several millions have been destroyed. Villages, town and fine cities consumed by flames. And two generations cannot completely rebuild what has been wiped out. Sindh lies in the northwestern corner of the Indian subcontinent, a dry desert land greened by the mighty Indus. Most of Sindhi's Muslims converted gradually over the centuries with the lower classes, the Haris or peasants, craftsmen, seeking to escape the harshness of the Hindu caste hierarchy by embarrassing Islam. Centuries, Sindhi Hindus and Muslims had shared a relationship, a relationship in which conflict and hostility mingle easily with amity. If the Muslims sat on the throne, the Hindus held the purse strings to the economy. If the Muslims dominated the countryside, the Hindus great influence in the cities. 
Sindh had also taken an increased political significance for the British, who were nervous about Russian designs on Afghanistan. Karachi became the British gateway to the rest of the Sindh. By the turn of the century, after just 50 years of British rule, Hindus owned or controlled through mortgage more than 42% of the land in Sindh. Muslims in Sindh were slow to adopt to the new regime. Many Sindhi Muslims did not take easily to Western education. And it was only in 1885 that the Sindh Madrasatul Islam was established in Karachi. Once there was a wicked Hindu king, Dalu Rai, who ruled Sindh, the capital in the north. He and his brother, the evil Sasu Rai, had laid down a law. Any newly married woman in his kingdom had to spend the first night of her marriage with the king. Earlier, if a Hindu was forcibly converted to Islam, the community downed the shutters of their shops in protest or complaint to the rulers. Increased friction between Hindus and Muslims in Sindh in the 1920 crystallized into the Sindhi Muslims demand for the separation of Sindh from the Bombay presidency. Sindhi Hindus also possesses a long history of living as a small but prosperous minority under Muslim rule for centuries. Before the century of British rule from 1843 to 1947, Sindh had Muslim rulers for 11 centuries, a long period during which Hindus had not just survived but also flourished financially. The Congress maintained its official line that the minorities should not migrate and should carry on as though nothing had changed. This did not sit well with the Sindhis Hindus, who were looking for guidance on how to adjust to the new social political reality of Pakistan. Karachi had been appointed the new capital of Pakistan by early June 1947. It had a sparkling reputation for cleanliness, law and order, a mild climate with a fine harbour and an airport. 